My name is Marvin Gonzalez de Leon, and I am the playwright of Madre de Dios at the National Playwrights Conference. First started writing it at the end of 2020. Um, it's not a COVID play, but it was a play that was written because I spent a lot of time with my mother uh, at the beginning of the lockdown, so kind of inspired this play. And uh, from there, it went on to be workshopped at a number of different places, including Page 73, um, the Playwright Center, and Roundhouse Theater. So uh, there's been a lot of different variations of this play, a lot of different drafts it's gone through. That's been the journey with it, and hopefully we can get into a place where it really feels like it's it's ready to go into uh, the rehearsal room. I'm inspired by a couple of things, two things. I think one of it was just wanting to write a play that I felt um, sort of reflected what it was like living in a first-generation Mexican-American household. And part of that is the, the way that Spanish and English engage with each other. Um, so I really wanted to write a play that like accurately reflected that. I wanted to write something that felt like me taking my shot at writing like uh, an American family drama, just from the perspective of a Mexican-American household, which really to say a Mexican-American household, a bilingual household like that, is just as American as, as any other household. So this is a very personal play to me. Um, it's, it's very much an homage uh, to Latin American literature, and it's very much written in honor of my mother. I want people to take away, uh, th there's all different types of ways that families can operate, all different ways that families can be comprised, and the languages they can speak within the household. Um, but I, I hope that people are really like seeing themselves, um, even, even people who aren't necessarily bilingual, people who don't speak Spanish, are seeing a reflection of their their themselves and their families in the way that um, even when families get messy and there's you know there there's there's walls put up between members of the household uh, when the household is full of love and when that love is real there's not really any barriers. My primary artistic influence on this is not theatrical. It's actually uh, a Mexican novelist named Anzulfo. Um, and his novel, Pedro Paramo, is just continuously uh, one of the main influences on my, on my writing in general. The, the best parts about it, I think, are just like being in a place that is imbued with a ton of history, specifically uh, how that history relates to the American theater. Being in this beautiful environment, but I think that the main thing is just like being in a, co a cohort of other playwrights, some of whom I had met before, all like some of whom I knew reputationally, but uh, I really think that like the sort of camaraderie uh, between the playwrights in our little cottage uh, has been the, the most rewarding part about this so far. Uh, when you're when you're sort of breaking into the theater as a playwright, um, there's a lot of like questioning whether you belong someplace or. You know, you get a little bit of that imposter syndrome thing going on. Um, but just like taking a walk around, like in the hallways here, seeing those plaques with all the different playwrights and the different plays, a lot of which I've read over the years, you know, having been developed here. Um, and then being in this cohort of great playwrights whose work I've come to know a lot better and respect uh, immensely. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's affirming in that way where you, you feel like um, you're not an outsider just sort of sneaking in the back door, that you're in fact an invited guest and that you're an part, a big invited part of, uh, of, of the American theater. So yeah, it's, it's been really affirming in that way. I'm working with a new, a new director and I'm working with a, a few different actors who I've never worked with. So I think that like, the main thing is like, for me, the room is always a, a very collaborative space. And so I think having like a fresh perspective on it, um, you know, cause it's a really talented team that we've assembled, but having some fresh perspective on, on the play itself, um, I think is actually gonna be very helpful. That might be, might be more helpful than if I was working with uh, directors that I've worked with on this piece before and a full cast that I've worked with. Um, I'm really excited to, you know, hop into the room with a, a, a new group of talented artists to see if they can pull something out of the 
out of this play that I haven't seen before and maybe um, make it better in that way. I, I've always had a clear idea of what the, an, the very end of this play uh, is going to be, but that last, there's a big last scene at the end. Um, so my goal, like very specifically, is to really just tighten that up and figure out the shape of that scene so that by the time we get to uh, the very end of the play, which I know will be a very moving ending, that it uh, that, that ending makes sense and that it feels earned and that it feels like inevitable and also surprising. I think that like there's something about the history that just is imbued in this space and in this property, um, in this, you know, this, this campus that we're all a part of. Um, something that like, you know, the same way that when you walk into a church, it feels sacred. There's just something about coming onto the campus that you immediately get a sense of like the history involved in it. That I think, I think like every other playwright, we're not just writing plays uh, to be, you know, to be read at, at workshops like this or to just exist on the page. We want to see them produced. So I think all of us have the goal of eventually taking our play and having it programmed. I just want to work at a place that's like 100% behind this play.